What about whipping up a storm? You well, know where I'm coming from? I do, I do. Um, it, it is an ongoing story, it's a developing story, it's an important story, the whip in British racing. And it, it's significant and full disclosure, I've always been a person who I actually like to see a willing horse responding to pressure. Mm. I have no problem seeing a willing horse hit 10 or 12 times if he's being given time to respond and if he's responding mm. generously. I think that's, that's part of the call and response of racing. But times have moved on. Um, the coverage of this issue, I think, Gordon, has been dramatic and perhaps dramatically one-sided. And I do get it. I'm not trying to start a feud with these guys. I'm trying to put the thing in context. So. Matt Chappers Chapman blasting away at everyone, BHA trainers and owners for not getting aboard his bandwagon. I get it. Richard Forrestal, a fine journalist at the Racing Pole, saying Irish pandering, yeah, pandering to a, a small minority who are not interested in racing leads one way to oblivion. Jack Keane in the sun saying that we're going to face a jockey crisis by the time Aintree comes around. Now, I want to try and set this thing in context. We've had two weeks now of whip review committee mm -hmm. results. 20 bands in the first week, nine in the second for all different types of effects fences but I want I want to use facts facts are not very important to many many people nowadays just hot takes hot takes is all we, all they look for all they need all the columnist needs but let's have a look at this you were around I was around yep. Gordon in 2011 when the last major crisis whip crisis was in play and I think it the temperature was hotter back then than now have there a look at this Gordy mm. 2010 and 2011 1032 and 1003 breaches. We'll come on to the breakdown of those breaches yeah, yeah. in a minute. Towards the end of 2011, the new penalties and rules came into play. They were harsher penalties, tougher sentences and a lower threshold. The standard for jockeys, the bar was raised and raised considerably. But guess what? When they knew what they faced in terms of punishment, they adapted and look at those numbers from Dropping 2012 off. onwards. 646, 584, 593, 538, 469, 536, pretty consistent, 560, COVID 410, 2020 is the COVID hole, so don't worry too much about that. 479 in 21, couldn't get the 22 figures from the BHA, they're not quite fully updated yet. But look at that pattern. Yep. What I'm saying there is despite the fact that jockeys were being held to a much higher standard, bands have effectively halved over yeah, the last yeah, yeah. decade. That's very significant and, and I wanted to make that clear because the coverage of this is really, really fiery, but there's an inconvenient truth for people like me who tried to fight this battle a long, long time ago. The inconvenient truth is that the BHA won last time around. Mm. They said, we want to tighten up these whip rules we want to modernise racing, we want to make it as accessible to as many people as possible. And those numbers tell me, and should tell you, that the BHA won that battle. Now they're in another battle now. It's not just about will numbers this time though. It, will it settle down as well? I don't know. I think, I think there is, there's a new kid in town here, a new sheriff in town in, in, in the expulsion tool. If you go four over the limit, you can be thrown out. Yes. And we've already had two expulsion, expulsion tools branded so far. Bumpers. Yeah. So that is, there is more heat. There's more pain in this labor. No question about it. Will it settle down over time? Those stats suggest it's not impossible. Let's have a look at the breakdown of type of offenses. And this is, this is really interesting, I think. Yep. UK whip offenses since 2010. Down the shoulder in the forehand. That is one of the offenses that the BHA were desperate to try to attack. Look at that. Nine, off a cliff. 98 in 2010 to 3 in 2021. <laughs> Excessive force. 24 in 2010, 7 in 2021. Hitting a horse out of contention. Can you believe that? 121 in 2010. Probably about is it one in one in eight, one in eight and a bit was for hitting horses who had no chance of winning. Yeah. A pretty egregious offence, I'm sure you'll agree. Down to five in 2021. Now, don't read too much into this. Horses wheel by whip use. 18 in 2010, yeah. only one in 2021. That's almost certainly more to do with whip technology advancements the, rather than a, 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 a sea change uh, in mentality. But I wanted to put these out there for people who have who've seen, heard and read a lot about this so-called scandal that's ongoing in racing. Now, 
I get the fact that this has not been handled well from the steering committee whose recommendations have been torched, from the swithering BHA who've been slapped around by the shop floor in changing policy on the hoof, from the jockeys who found a voice way too late and have ended up ushering in some of the most severe whip rules of all time, the most severe whip rules of all time in Britain. It has been a circular firing squad and the media, some of them haven't really helped because they've presented a very one-sided picture of this. But that is the other side of that coin. Last time around, those numbers show that the BHA won that battle. They're in another one now and it's going to be fascinating to see how it plays out. And we're saying there's a connection between the man that's riding here today, our dual champion jockey Brian Hughes and whip rules old and new. What a really good point. If you look back in Brian Hughes's record, he was a 40 to 50 a winner guy in 2009, 2010, and he was also a five or six whip ban a year guy. He was struggling to stay within the limits. The limits got tighter, Brian Hughes got cuter, and his career over the last decade oh, has gone from strength to strength to strength. There is no one in Britain over jumps involved in as many tight finishes as him. He's had probably 160, 170 winners a year yeah. average mm. for the last five years, and he's averaged, Gordon, I think, one small whip ban a year. Not everyone is as good or as sharp or as adaptable as Brian Hughes, but his career, not just over a year or two years, no. over a decade or more, shows how a good, intelligent, very strong, dependable jockey can adapt to a new regime. So there are two sides to this coin, and uh, I hope we've shown a side of the coin today that maybe some people haven't considered, especially read the data.